Hey, this is Harry Guinness from tutsplus.com and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with Numbers for iCloud. Numbers for iCloud is Apple's spreadsheet application in the cloud. You can access it from any modern web browser just by going to iCloud.com, logging in with your iCloud account, you can see mine there, and then clicking on the Numbers web app just there. This will launch you into the Numbers web app where any documents you've already made using the Numbers for iCloud application or saved to iCloud from Numbers on your Mac or iOS devices, they'll all appear here. We're going to jump right in and we're going to create a new document. So you click Create Spreadsheet, a nice big plus there. And this will present you with a load of themes. Now, in the previous two applications, I've featured Keynote and Pages. The themes were largely different ways of displaying the same sort of information. However, with Numbers for iCloud, all the themes are pre-made spreadsheets with different functions and things already set up. So if you're looking to create a monthly budget, a savings plan, compare loans, uh, there's pay sheet ones down here in the business, uh, invoices, break even analysis, all this sort of thing. There's likely a template that suits your need. But because we're just getting started, we're going to jump in and we're going to use the blank template. So double click on that and that will launch in a new tab or a new window depending on your browser settings. So this just takes a second to load up and then we're at the default iCloud numbers view here. Uh, as you can see, we've got a nice table already set up for us. The size of this table is always, or at least almost always, going to be totally wrong for your uses. So one of the most important things to do is resize the table so it fits your needs. There's a few ways you can do that. The easiest is to look at these control handles here and just drag these in and out. The one here lets you change the number of rows and columns all in one go. So we need 13 rows and three columns, including these gray header columns for this tutorial. Now, if you're following along with the written tutorial, you'll see that I'm getting you to enter some data in here. Rather than watching me type, we're just gonna switch over to a new tab here where I already have the data inputted. What we're going to do in this spreadsheet is we're going to calculate the average amount of words I used in my last 10 Tuts Plus tutorials, as well as the average number of images. This is going to introduce you to the functions and the power of functions in numbers. Any spreadsheet application is really based around inputting data and then using functions to do things with that data. So we're going to use the average function. Spreadsheets are so powerful that I could go in and recreate the average function myself. But because Apple has kindly included a nice average function for me, we're just going to use that. To start inputting a function, you just hit the equals symbol. And that brings up the functions panel over here and the functions input dialog box there. The easiest way to find a function, if you're not quite sure how it's called, is to enter into the search box here the name or what you want the function to do. So we're looking for average, and you'll see that there's a few different average functions here, each with a few different arguments and things like that. You can see the description down the bottom here that tells you exactly what the function takes, what it does, what it gives you, what its limits are, that sort of thing. We just want the simple basic average function. So we're gonna click insert function and that puts the average function into the function input dialog here. We could just type average followed by some parentheses and get the exact same effect. Now we have to select the range of values that the function is gonna find the average of. We wanna do it for word count first. So we just drag from the top, from B2 down, all the way to B11 and then release. And we see we've got B2 colon B11, which means all the range of values from B2 to B11. Again, we could just have typed this, and as you start to get more familiar with things like numbers and inputting functions, you'll find you will just type these in here by hand. 
to accept that we just click the little green check mark and numbers calculates the average and we find that I've been using 1370 words for each tutorial at the moment I know this tutorial is about 1900 words long so it's about 600 words longer than average interesting to know you can also see that uh, we've got all the number of images put in here now we could find the average number of images by doing the exact same thing we just did entering equals finding the average function clicking insert function and dragging the range but there's a much simpler way you see that I've got the cell B13 highlighted here and there's a little white circle there if I just drag that circle over to cell C13 and release it's going to copy the function across but it doesn't just copy the function across blindly what it does is it takes all the B values and substitutes them with C values. So we're finding the average of all the cells from C2 down to C11. You can see in the input box here equals average C2 colon C11. This then is the final spreadsheet. It calculates how many words and how many images I've used in my last 10 Tuts Plus tutorials. I'm pretty proud of what I've done here. So I want to use one of iWork for iCloud's best features. The ability to share your spreadsheets with others and have them either go in and edit what you've done or just view it. To do that, you click on the little share icon up in the top right there and then click share spreadsheet. That brings up the share dialog box here that allows you to send this link to anyone you want to access your spreadsheet. You can change whether you want them to just view it or allow them to edit it. You can add a password for extra security, but you just got to make sure you send the password along with the link, otherwise they won't be able to access it. If at any time you want to stop sharing, you can just click on the stop sharing button. Numbers for iCloud is a really powerful application. I've only barely scratched the surface of the features and the functions that are available in it. I urge you go play around with it, explore it. It's a really great spreadsheet application. You won't even believe it's running in your browser. Check out the written tutorial below this screencast for more details and a slightly more in-depth walkthrough of some of the things I've touched on here. I've been Harry Guinness and this was a screencast for Tuts Plus.